Hi, we're Julia and Josh, and we've been travelling Europe in our self-converted van for the past three weeks. This week, we're exploring the hidden gems of the south of France, starting first with a search for pink lakes and wild flamingos. We came to see the pink salt lakes and flamingos and flamingos currently when, still hunting for the flamingos and kind of for more lakes <laughs> well it's, we have seen it's, one just show them this oh they? yeah see that lake beautiful <laughs> No, but really, this is a. Whoa. It's like snow. Oh my god, it's so good. Rip. Oh, it's like got a layer of. Um, I mean, it's obviously salt, but it feels like a layer of ice on top, don't it? Oh, that's crazy. After learning about the Carmagu Nature Park, we did a little digging and found out that the area near to the town of Port St. Louis de Ron was the most untouched and crowd free. Though this had its perks, it also meant that our chances of spotting the wild flamingos were somewhat lower. So we felt very lucky when after 45 minutes of searching, we spotted our first flamingos. Since we'd driven all that way, we also took the chance to stop for a quick dip in the ocean. We were ready to head straight back into town to find our park up, not expecting to see any more flamingos. And so we were pretty shocked to find that they had come out in their hundreds during our little stop on the beach. Finally, finally heard. I was about to say flamingos. The flamingos. Just, was just, was just laughing at how bushy my hair's got. I'm sinking. Just sinking. We finally found them. They are over there somewhere. We've got some place actually. Yeah. So Mission cool. accomplished. I'm so happy. <laughs> Whilst in the south of France, we couldn't miss the opportunity to stay at a vineyard, and so that is where we headed next. At this particular spot, we were lucky enough to enjoy a free wine tasting, communicating with the owner through the magic of Google Translate. You can find the location details for all our park-ups below in the description. We've met a little vineyard dog. We don't know his name, but he's so sweet and so calm and I think Josh has a new best friend I think I might be getting kicked out of the van <laughs> <laughs> he's so cute Hi. it smells better <laughs> as if that's probably true though <laughs> first time trying to see snails in France after wine tasting we're pretty drunk we're pretty tipsy <laughs> Okay, so I think. Oh my goodness, that's nice. Avantage, c'est un avantage aussi. It's a snail. It's a sea snail. It's like a. It's 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 a. Oh my gosh, we've just had snails. <laughs> when in France, eh? <laughs> Look at Josh with his wine. Uh, it's trip. I know, I'm his trip. <laughs> We'd had our fun the past couple of days, and so our next stop, the walled city of Avignon, was more of a work specific one. Still, we enjoyed an hour of exploring before settling down at an internet cafe with the intention to upload our very first video.
first time we come to a cafe to be productive, we forget the travel adapter. So we can't okay. charge the laptop. Do you like the first video? We felt so productive walking in here, getting our chai latte, get the MacBook out. I feel like it felt so businessy, but then we realised we can't charge it. Russia's really bored of trying to upload the first video. We've made it now, I'm just writing the description. And fellow writers, you know it doesn't come that easy. It's not like in seconds, it takes time. It's taking hours. It's not taking hours, we've been here maybe 15 minutes. <laughs> Stop exaggerating. Ran out of data, so I can't go on Twitter to watch cricket. Ran out of data. Oh yeah, he's. Family and friends, you'll be nicely shocked by this. Josh is a cricket lover now. This is what it's come to. Yeah, the ashes have gone to me. <laughs> I do enjoy it. But my data's run out, so I can't. Right, okay. Anymore. See, now you're distracting me. I'm not going to get it written any faster, look what you. Bless me. Great place to casually fly your kite. He's in his element, I know, I'm yeah, happy for it. Now that we had successfully completed our work, we were ready to head out of the city and back into nature. Our next stop was the town of Fontaine de Vaucluse, a small commune in the province region named after the famous spring it is home to. Julia's gas, she's got a crepe, crap, crepe. How do you say it? Crepe or crap? I think it's crepe. That's why you get the little um, accent over the E. So I think it's like an A. Crepe. La crepe. I'm not sure though. I could be wrong. Okay. Crepe or crap for the view. Also, just want to know do flies go to dirtier people because they don't seem to be going to anyone else but us. We haven't showered in a while and I feel like I'm getting, I'm an incredible fly man. <laughs> Alright, today... <laughs> yeah, what's going on with my... Yeah? Today, um, I don't even know where we're at. Where are we at? <laughs> we're trying to give you guys information but Julia just wants to see some pancakes so we'll be back in two seconds. <laughs> Bye bye. It's a little cave passage. It's a little cave stream. <laughs> Today, now Julia's finished the crap. <laughs> we can now tell you and be informative, yes. hopefully. Today, we're in Fontaine de Vaucluse, oh. I believe it's called. Yeah, it's um, about an hour away from Avignon, if I say that right. Um, really good park up for people doing the van life kind of thing. It's about a five, ten minute walk from the park up and the park yeah. was right next to the stream which is such clear water. Yeah. So which will give the details in either our blog or the below. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, so <laughs> definitely recommend coming here if you're coming through the fans. Also doing this route means you miss out Marseille, which we wasn't too keen on being not <laughs> 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 Okay, alright, cut. Ow! Why's <laughs> your head? Oh. It's okay. Okay, um, back to it. Yeah, we're obviously, we're, we're not too keen on city, city so um, yeah. we, we don't really want to leave the van in Marseille, like, part up. In any city. Yeah. We've found pretty much every single city has reviews for, like, the park ups within the city it has reviews where it's just, like, don't. It's, it's a bit not iffy, so yeah. It's just cities though, isn't it? So we wanted to Most get people. past Marseille, so we found these places, which is out of the way. It's about an hour away from Marseille, but yeah, it means you'd north, like, ex north. Oh, from, yeah, north. It just means yeah. you experience these kind of mountains and the streams, and they are very beautiful, so, yeah. yeah. We'll defo give you the description, so if you're ever coming through here, and you don't want to go to a big city, we'll give you our little route around Marseille. All right, we're gonna go and carry on. See ya. Throughout the whole town, emerald green water flows from the spring into the river and various streams, all adding to the fairy tale like feel of the area. Interestingly, the depth of the spring is a bit of a mystery after various failed attempts to measure it over the years. 
this is not the only strange thing about this place, as history has it that it was once home to a cult and made a place for ritual offerings. Kind of glad we learnt that after we'd already left. Still, it's a beautiful place to visit, particularly if you come in the wetter months during autumn and spring, or so we've been told. Because we are by this extremely clear water river, <laughs> Josh really wanted to use his um, water filter. Yes. So, that is what's happening here. <laughs> Ooh. Shut me right. <laughs> I've just tasted it and honestly, it tastes really good. Water, it doesn't taste weird whatsoever. Pretty cool. Turn left onto Route de Saint Michel, <laughs> then at the roundabout, take the second exit um, onto Route de La Fontaine. As we are in Provence and it's the end of June. We have tried, well, we're trying to find some lavender fields. That's the roundabout. Take the second exit onto Rue de la Fontaine. Being interrupted. Because <laughs> this area is known for them and it's meant to be quite a sight. So, hopefully. We're, we were we'll flamingo them. hunting the other day, now we're <laughs> lavender hunting. Yeah. But we came to a place where there was meant to be some, we haven't seen any, Half so we've just been Turn researching. Gibson right Dorothy. Right <laughs> we've just been researching um, and fingers crossed we may have found a place so we're headed there now. We'll see. If only we could have skipped straight to this moment in reality, but it actually took quite a lot of work getting there. The Kalonk de Casas hike. There are some places that you hear about which sound so unique and beautiful that not even 36 degree heat can stop you from seeing them. This was our thinking when we set off for a sunset hike towards the furthest and, by all accounts, most spectacular of the three inlets that make up the Kalonk de Casas. It's, it's a tough little hike, this one. Hopefully the views and the sea is worth it. So, so, so. Look at it. It's non-stop uphill. A three times and back, up and down over steep rocky terrain with heights of over 400 meters is what makes this hike so grueling. The silver lining, once you complete every walk down, you're met with crystal clear blue waters, hidden only for those who come here on foot or at times by boat. Trust us, it's worth it. The boat's developing jelly legs after going down that. Yeah. And we still have to go up it, so we're a bit, a bit apprehensive of how it's gonna go. How it's gonna go. So, um, yeah. Hopefully we um, get this video out. Yes, you what? Might be the last to hear from it. Yeah, hopefully this video comes out because that means we're still not in a little massive cave. cave. Finally, after what felt like the hardest hike of our lives, we arrived at the furthest inlet, the Kalank Dern Val. Finished it. 
water is freezing. So cold. So clear. So cold. But snacks. it was so nice. Half eaten apple. Don't mind the half eaten apple. <laughs> Let's leave Josh half. <laughs> Give it ice too. My drugs. Can I, can I just clarify, we're, we're not seasoned hikers, so if there's any hikers like, oh, that's easy. We used to go pub every week, and not really, we used to have a takeaway every Friday. We've always wanted to do this life in Bielfia, and we've start, only started this. Now, so that's this why, is the new way of life this, is, this is why we start our breath of struggling with this. And I did have a pint before this, <laughs> stupidly. It was so strong beer as well. Yeah. <laughs> but we're doing it. Since the walk back to the van was worse than the actual hike itself. Oh, yes, yes. We, we've run out of water. <laughs> we've run out of hope and dreams. <laughs> I'm gonna give up soon. We had our dinner it's and it's 10 to 10. <laughs> what are we doing? Uh, I'm so close to knocking on a door and asking them for water. Ooh, I know. Uh, we had a glimmer of hope. There was one souvenir shop. Yeah. No drink. I've never, I've never been so thirsty in my life. I was so tempted to drink the seawater. <laughs> he asked me a good five times. But really, what would happen if I drank some seawater? <laughs> It was clear. <laughs> I know it would be bad. <laughs> All right, we're going to carry on and reserve our energy until we get some water because I can't be able to talk because my mouth's just sticking together. It's that dry. <laughs> so, au revoir. Au revoir. Good night. Thank <laughs> you.